Hey everyone, this is Chris, and you're listening to One Cross Radio, and today we're going to talk about Star Wars The Last Jedi, which I'm really on the fence about, guys. I'll I'll be honest. Um, I know Hector Mire from Faith and Fandom loved it. Uh, He was going all out on Instagram, uh, talking about how much he loved it. And again, y'all should really check them out. Faith and Fandom is great. Check out their podcast, their Facebook, their Instagram, their books. They are fantastic. Um, anyways, back to The Last Jedi. It is seemingly the most divisive of the franchise, and I totally understand why. Um, heck, myself, after I left the movie, I went from focusing on the stuff I didn't like to then when my wife was asking me about it, I was going over all this stuff that I loved, so then it was uh, suddenly like one of my, like my, my third favorite, which it's not, um, (laughs) it's, it's not. And then I was focusing on what I didn't like, and it was going down in terms of what's my favorite. And it's, I want, I got to see it again. I I really do. I want to be able to judge it on its own merits. So I think it's so divisive because of the whole thing. It's, its whole thing was subversion and it was something I loved about it, but it broke its own rules. It, Star Wars broke its own rules, and that's, I think, the thing a lot of people end up having a problem with. So, let's go with this. Uh, what I didn't like, I hated the Rose Finn story. If I'm editing that sucker, like, that would be the deleted scenes, DVDs, extras. The story just dragged the movie down, it was not well done. It was, let's save the animals for the sake of it. I'm all for saving animals, but it it didn't even make any sense. And the character's like, I don't like these, like these people being slaves to a guy who was enslaved by the First Order. It, I just really didn't like it. And yeah, sure, you can make the argument that uh, Benicio Del Toro's character... Uh, he wouldn't have revealed to the First Order unless their story had happened, but you could have done it a totally different way and been much more serving. I swear, it's like, Ryan Johnson wanted to do the the Luke, the Rey, and the Kylo Ren story, and that's the one that excelled, but then it's no, you have to use these new characters and you have to introduce these other new characters, and those other side stories really struggled. Uh, Poe and Laura Dern's story made no sense whatsoever. Like, I like Poe, but the whole thing is, hey, he's a hothead, so we're going to disregard his opinion. Yeah, let's leave vital information away from the guy who might actually overreact and cause a mutiny. That that makes sense. Like, it was going out of the way to to cause conflict between these two characters. How much... Of the story and how quick would a, that storyline have been solved if she was just like, hey, we're doing this so I can sneak people away. It makes no sense that she would not tell him. It was just manufactured conflict for the sake of it. The new characters, as much as I love them, their side stories were pretty lame. I, I, I didn't care for them. I also really did not like that Luke's dead. Like, I'm going to get into it when I get into the stuff I liked, but Luke went on a journey in this movie, and it was friggin' awesome. But then, at the end, when he's back to the Skywalker, the Luke Skywalker we know and love, it's, alright, I used all my energy, peace out, and then I'm gone. And I just, it just left a bad taste in my mouth. I didn't like that they're just tossing away the the old characters i get it you need to make room for the new characters but there's better ways to do it and i think there was more mileage out of that character um it did disregard story a bit uh and it did it just for the sake of it it was it's a thing i like and don't like the movie was going left whenever you thought it, it would go right And then the problem with doing that all the time is it just tosses stuff away. And by disregarding the story, I mean, like, the big two questions coming out of The Force Awakens was, who are Rey's parents and who who is Snoke? And at the end of the day, we were told neither of these matter. And that just, 
I don't know. It it, it leaves a it bothers me um, because you posed those questions. You made us want answers. You left it dangling. You deliberately did this, and then you're you're just being like, yeah, it, do- it doesn't matter. Which, on one hand, I respect you for doing, but on the other hand, it it it's bothersome. Uh, yeah, that that's the that's the thing. And the other thing is, it leaves this movie leaves us right back where we were at the end of the Force Awakens for the most part, where it's Ray and the and the rebels essentially because now they're they're the rebels, not the resistance. Uh, they're over here on the right. And then Kylo is still off on the left. Now he's the big bad, so there's been a slight development. But not much has changed. And that was a beef I had with The Force Awakens. Because The Force Awakens suddenly is 30 years later. And we're back to square friggin' one. Where how ha- how did we how did we get back to this point? And I get it. You're addressing it in the comics. You're addressing it in the books. That's great. But give me a vignette. Give me something in the movie to explain this. So I don't like how we're... While stuff is happening and while we're technically growing, we're not. Because we're still in the same almost starting positions that we were when we got into this flick. (sighs) So stuff... Oh yeah. And the other thing is, I, I can't hold it against the movie, but... It still bugs me that they didn't do it. I have been waiting to see Jedi Master Luke Skywalker, a master in his prime, do Jedi Mastery things. Going into this movie, I had little expectation of it. But then, at the end of the flick, as he's going towards... He he goes and apologizes to Leia, and he's doing his thing and he goes out to the walkers it's just this brief almost film tease of stuff's gonna get wrecked and i'm like oh my gosh we're gonna see him wreck stuff and then all the the walkers blast fire on him and he just does the shoulder brush off which is very modern humor in a a star wars story which i don't like but it it didn't bother me too much but anyways i'm just like Oh my gosh, they're going to do it. They're going to do it. Holy crap. I I can't believe it. They're going to do it. They're going to... And then they don't. And it's not their fault, but it was just the fanboy in me won over. And I'm like, please show no restraint. Do what that amazing Clone Wars cartoon from 2003 did, where Mace Windu like wrecks an entire army of battle droids by punching them because he lost his lightsaber. I wanted to look force pushing and force throwing walkers all over the place. I get it that it might have been out of character, but it was just one of those fanboy things where I'm like, give me service now. I can't fault the movie for it, but I still wish they did it. Um, but th- I'm focusing on the stuff I didn't like. I still There's a lot of stuff I did dig in this movie. I loved Luke's journey. I loved it. I loved him being in a different position. I love seeing characters grow, and his character definitely did. His character did go on a journey. We still saw it, even though he'd become this great hero at the end of Jedi. He was still struggling when he was briefly like, oh, I'm going to have to kill Kylo when he's an apprentice. Like, I loved that they did stuff like that, where his character had to grow. And he went on a journey throughout the movie. And then I was so excited when he got back to his, like, I'm a Jedi Master role at the end of it after that Yoda scene, which I also loved. Yoda being a puppet again? Ugh, please always be a puppet. I had no idea that cameo was coming, and I friggin' loved that it was there. Loved that it was a puppet. And it, it was a great surprise. I loved that Luke went on a journey, and when he got back to being the Jedi, the Jedi Master, I was so excited because I'm like, all right, awesome, he's grown, he's changed, he's back to where we left him off, but he's even better now, and then it's, I'm out. So I loved what they did in the movie with him, I just hate that he's he's dead. Um, That lightsaber fight with, with Rey and Kylo was excellent. It was great. Is it the top in the franchise? No. Uh, I don't know where I'd place it. I actually just did a, uh, a ranking of the 12 
lights 12 out of 13 lightsaber fights that we've seen in film. It didn't include this one from the... Uh, I almost said the last battle. <laughs> <laughs> from The Last Jedi. Uh, it didn't include it, but if you guys want to check it out, I'll put the link in the bottom. I don't know where it would be on that list, but it's not at the top. It's also definitely not at the bottom. It was a solid battle, and it was cool. It was different from other battles that we saw. Um, I like that it took risks. I loved that this movie took risks. On one hand, I don't like the decisions that they made, or at least some of the decisions that they made. I don't like the outcome, but I still loved the fact that it was a Star Wars movie that kept me guessing. As much as I love Star Wars movies, they don't really do that. This one really kept me guessing. It kept going left when I thought it would go right, and you can make, yeah, you can definitely say there's expectations, and then there's, I can't remember the other term, and you're right, and they should have been some stuff with the expect, meeting the expectations, but I can't help Oh yeah, it, it's either being predictable or meeting expectations. And you should meet expectations without being predictable. But at the end of the day, I still can't help but respect the fact that it kept me guessing. Every single time I thought it was going to go right, it went left. Every time I thought it was going to go left, it went right. I had no idea what was going on. For better or for worse, it kept doing that. And I, I got to respect it. Like, I love and also don't like that they killed Snoke. When they kill Snoke, I'm like, wow, okay, they did this. It's like, there's this, we're moving on, we're going in this way. So I can't help but respect that. But at the same, on the same token, I still want that answer. You set me up for wanting that answer, so it's it, it's a bit of a catch-22. But I still like that they took risks. It was, I swear, it's almost like with The Last... Uh, with The Force Awakens, people were like, it's too much like the original ones. So this one is like, let's be as different as possible. And it went too far different. So now it's, you got to find a happy medium. I like the fact that I don't know what the next one's going to be. For better or for worse. I just like that I don't know. That hasn't happened with a Star Wars movie yet. Uh... The visuals were amazing, especially the the light speed shot. And if you've seen the flick, then you know what I'm talking about. And if you haven't seen the flick, why are you listening to this? Stop listening, go watch the movie, and then come back and listen. I'll be honest, I like the Porg. I know they're hit or miss with some people, and yes, they are there to shill toys, but so much of Star Wars is, and they're harmless. They are harmless things to shill toys. They're cute. They're funny. That scene with the Porg seeing Chewie eat one had me cracking up. I was laughing hysterically. It was one of the funniest scenes in the movie. And compared to other stuff in Star Wars where it is very toyetic, these are harmless. So they, they, they were fine by me. So my main takeaways from The Last Jedi. Uh, at the end of the day, I still like this more than The Force Awakens. Because even though it lifted from Empire and Jedi, it was still very much its own thing. It was its own movie, so I, I respect it so much for that, even if I don't like the decisions that were made within it. Uh, the Force Awakens is very enjoyable. I like it a lot, but it, at the end of the day, it was a New Hope 2.0. It was a movie I've seen. The, for, the Last Jedi... It wasn't a movie I've seen. I don't love everything it did, but it's still a Star Wars movie I haven't seen. Uh, the other takeaway, Rogue One is still the best of the new movies. It, Rogue One was fantastic, and it was the one that I was like, how are you going to do a story where we all know what's going to happen? But it was engaging, it was visually stunning, and it had that amazing Vader hallway scene. Rogue One is still the bar. Um... The other thing that's unfortunate out of this movie is it showed that for this current trilogy, there is no ground plan. They're, they're, not, they're making this up as they go, and I, I don't like that. If you're doing a trilogy and you're doing a three-chapter story, you have to know what the second and then the third chapter is going to be. But they are making this up as this goes. This one showed it. There was points in this movie where I'm like, is there an episode nine? Because you're wrapping this up in a bow. And even though we're back to where we left off. 
and that happened in the force awakens um like i don't like that we're making this up as we go heck the week that the the last jedi was released abrams went in to pitch his story for episode nine and that shouldn't be the case the story there should be a ground plan there should be something the there sh- there should be something so i'm really hoping that with uh ryan johnson's trilogy that it will be more so like the original like the prequels in the sense of there was the very at the very least the ideas of where the story was going yes they changed from flick to flick that happens but the original trilogy had a coherent story one two three the prequels for all their flaws had a pretty coherent story one two three flaws and all and almost opened that kettle of worms which by the way if you want to check out really good cuts of the prequels look up on youtube the anti-cheese cuts i'm probably going to include the links on the bottom but i don't want them taken down off of youtube because they're fantastic so yeah i at the end of the day i need to see this flick again um i want to be able to judge it on its own merits because i'm still very much in the stage of it's not what I thought it should have been, but I can't be like, it's bad because there was still a lot that I liked. Um, and I'm, I'm very conflicted. And I see both sides. For the people who loved it, for the critics, where it's like, at, on Rotten Tomatoes, I think it's at a 91% critically, and I can understand. I can understand how they got there. For the fans, for the fans where it's at 53, again, on Rotten Tomatoes, and then as you see people talking about it online, I can understand their gripes with it. I can understand their beefs. Uh, the storytelling wasn't as solid. The especially with Finn and Rose, especially with Poe and Laura Dern. Um, like, there, there's some stuff where some people are like, these Force powers weren't established in the previous one, so how can they show up? But that doesn't bug me too much, to be honest, because there's a first time for every Force power. And yes, a line of dialogue would have made it so much better to explain. Like, look, Leia's strong in the Force, and it was her, it's the Force instinctually saving her. The Supermaning through space didn't bother me uh, as much as it bothered other people. Like, yes, it looked silly, but um, uh, I'll be honest, I thought she was dead. And as soon as they showed her in space, I'm like, oh, okay, she's she's alive. I'm a little bit more on board. And Carrie Fisher did good. So I'm not I'm not one of the ones who hated it. It's that seems to be a sticking point for people. Um, but heck, we're watching a movie with space lit with space wizards and laser swords. So, at the end of the day, I'm all on board with it. And heck, I'm a huge Star Wars guy. I miss the old expanded universe where there was a lot, a lot weirder Force powers than that. So, I guess my my wife keeps telling me, like, well, you've got that predisposed knowledge, which is fair. It's true, I do. But I still, to me, at the end of the day, I'm like, it's not that much of a leap. Force ghosts, lightning, sure, you could instinctually drag yourself through space somehow Uh, i'm down um yeah so hopefully episode nine will be good um right now i put the the last jedi somewhere around uh, my fourth or fifth favorite but i do want to see it again uh see if that changes and if i'm able to enjoy it for what it is um but I'm really hoping episode nine breaks new ground, but in the right way. This one did break new ground, but in very polarizing ways. I don't want a Star Wars movie to keep playing it safe, but it still needs to adhere to its own rules while subverting them. And I'd, I'd like to find that middle ground. Um, yeah. And I don't want it to be where we're still technically storyline wise back where we've been again. Where when we left Jedi, it was like, everything's great. When we got to The Force Awakens, it's like, okay, no, things suck again. We're the, in the exact same position as we are in A New Hope. And then here, yep, we're essentially in the same position there as well, where uh, First Order is still going. Kylo's now in charge, but the rest is still relatively the same. 
And Rey is learning the Force as she goes, which was happening in The Last Jedi. No offense to Rain Johnson, he, or Ryan Johnson. Uh, he put a lot of effort in, and I'm looking forward to his trilogy where it's like his story, his thing from the get-go, instead of just, all right, we're switching up directors, and they're writing their own, and then we're switching up again, and then they're writing their own. So I want the next trilogy I want to be more cohesive, and episode nine I hope is excellent. I'm at a weird space with Star Wars. I love it. Like, I absolutely love it. But I don't want it to lose what makes it special. And with how often we're coming out, that might happen. But it's weird. I, I, I love this thing. It's, it was my franchise. It, it is my franchise. As much as I love comic book movies, it was the first non-cartoon I ever saw. And my dad showed it to me, and he loved Star Wars, and it was something we watched a lot together before he died. So it, it has a special place in my heart. Uh, so I want more of it, but I also want it done right. So it, it, it's interesting. Uh, I'll never stop talking about it. Anyways, uh, I think I've summed up my thoughts, but what did y'all think? And let me know. Put in the comments uh, on the website, because I'm linking this to the 2099 One Cross Street site. Let me know there. What did you think? What are your favorite Star Wars movies? Um, and what would you have done differently? Like film and fan theory, I love talking about it, especially with Star Wars, because there's so many different directions and cool directions to go and all that let me know in the comments hope you enjoyed the movie i hope you enjoyed it more than i did and i hope you yeah hit me back let me know i'm really curious this is one we're going to be talking about for a while probably till the han solo movie but i imagine even longer just because of how divisive this thing is anyways thank you for listening I hope you enjoyed. Hope you share. Love seeing that One Cross Radio is growing. Um, and I thank you guys for that. So I do hope you share. And like I said, I'm looking up to the website. Let me know in the comments. What did you think of The Last Jedi? What What did you like? What didn't you like? What would you have done differently? And heck, what are your favorite Star Wars movies? How would you rank them? Thanks for listening, my friends. And God bless. Take care.